In this video, we're going to look at several examples of calculating confidence intervals when you're given the margin of error. The very first thing you have to do for each of these problems is decide what type of statistic you're working with. Are you working with a single proportion, a single mean, a difference in proportions, or a difference in means? If you're unsure of the difference between these, you may want to go back and review um, earlier modules. Uh, modules 3 and modules 4 talked about single means, difference in means, single proportions and difference in proportions. So in these videos I'm going to show you examples for each of the four different types and then I'll talk about when reading um, the problems how you know that it was of that type. So for example the first one here says the mayor of a small city has suggested that the state locate a new prison there arguing that the construction project and resulting jobs will be good for the local economy. A total of 183 residents show up for a public hearing on the proposal and show that hands find only 31 in favor of the prison project. The margin of error for a 90% confidence interval is 0.0456. What can the city council conclude about public support for the mayor's initiative? All right, so first of all, notice here that we had 183 residents. So in other words, that tells me there were 183 people in the sample. And then what we did for each of those people is we saw if they were in favor or not in favor of the prison project. So we had 31 in favor. So notice this is categorical data because each person is either going to be a yes or a no and we only have one group. Well we summarize categorical data with a proportion. So that tells me here that I'm working with a single proportion. So for each of these problems the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the sample size. So when we work with a single proportion, one of the ways that we can check the sample size requirement is to see if there's more than 10 people in each group or in each category. So notice our two categories here are either going to be favor or not in favor. So we have 31 people in favor. And then since there were 183 people total, if 31 of them are in favor, we know that 183 minus 31 equals 152. We had 152 people not in favor. So both have counts greater than 10. So therefore, the central limit theorem, sample size requirements are met. Okay. Next, to calculate our confidence interval, We know from the notes that the formula for a confidence interval is always going to be the statistic plus or minus the margin of error. So we first need to find our statistic. Well, since we're working with a single proportion, we know that the statistic we're working with is going to be p hat. And so if you'll go back and look at that table of the notation, um, anytime we work with a statistic that's a single proportion, we use the notation p hat. And in this case, we had 31 out of the 183 in favor. So our p hat is going to be equal to 31 divided by 183. And if you put that in your calculator, I'm going to round this to four decimal places. That's 0 0.1694. Okay. So I know that my statistic is 0 0.1694 and then I'm going to have plus or minus and then they tell me that the margin of error for a 90% confidence interval is 0 0.0456. So now I can calculate my interval. The lower bound for the interval is going to be the 0 0.1694 
minus the 0 0.0456. So take a moment, put that in your calculator, and we get that the lower bound here is 0 0.1238. To get the upper bound on the interval, we're going to take 0.1694, and we're going to add the 0 0.0456. And so our upper bound is 0 0.215. So here's our confidence interval. So we've done our sample size check. We've calculated our confidence interval. And so next, the last thing we're going to do is give our interpretation. So our interpretation always needs to include three things. It needs to include our level of confidence, we're going to reference the parameter, and then we're going to give our interval. So our interpretation here is we are 90% confident. So let's go back and look at what our parameter would be. So we go back and look at a problem. So notice really what we're interested in here is all of the residents that live in this small city. So our parameter would be the proportion of all residents in the small city that are in favor, because that's the thing that we're really interested in, but we only had the information from those 183 citizens, is between and so our last piece, we're going to give the interval 0 0.1238 and 0 0.215. So notice if we go back up to the problem statement, it said, what can the city council conclude about public support for the mayor's initiative? Well, the confidence interval gives us a range of reasonable values for the parameter. So since the entire interval is below 0.5, we can conclude with 90% certainty or let's say instead of certainty, let's say confidence here. that less than half of the city is in favor. So for each of the problems that you do on the worksheet, the workflow is going to be very similar. You're going to check your sample size, you're going to calculate your confidence interval, and you're going to give your interpretation. The main thing that's going to change is what type of statistic or parameter you're working with. So this example looked at a single proportion. In the other, other examples on this worksheet, we're going to look at a single mean, a difference in proportions, and a difference in means.